games, however. Don on the mound right now, the left-hander from the University of Michigan, who uh, almost gave up the game of baseball at one time. Get uh, ready to face Ron LaFleur, and here for the play-by-play, -play, Ernie Harwell. Thanks, Paul. Ron batting 259, and Don delivers a, a strike call. So it's Ron against Don right now, as this one is underway. 76 degrees at game time. He takes a fastball in close, one and one on the leadoff man. The wind is out of the northwest at nine miles an hour. Going across from left to and right. It's a fastball from Don. It's high, two and one, the count on LaFleur. Standing forward in the batter's box, waiting now the two one delivery. Here it comes. He swings and fouls it away. Back of the plate in the seat. 2-2 on LaFleur. Well, the Tigers now have played in Minnesota four times. They've won one and lost three against the Twins. Coverage at third, small at short, Wilfong at second, Carew at first, making up the infield. Here's the pitch. He backs him away, a high tight fastball, 3-2. In the outfield for Gene Mock, it is Norwood in left, Ford in center, and Powell in right. The catcher is Weiniger, and the pitcher is on. 3-2 delivery. Walked him. It was high inside, and the Tigers get their leadoff man on on the base on ball. That's the 20th walk this year for Ron LaFleur. Here's the man who leads the league in walk. Kemp, he's walked 54 times. Has the four home runs, the 23 runs batted in, and hitting 299. Steve Kemp at the plate. Left-hander against the left-hander. Jim Solomon uh, came over by automobile from Waterloo, Iowa to root the Tigers in. He's uh, Detroit, spending the summer in Waterloo. Dan Keaton and Eric Hutchinson from Detroit are here. There's the ball outside. Ball on the count on Kemp. And uh, Ron Lasuda. Uh, from Detroit, who makes his home out here in uh, the Minneapolis, the St. Paul area now, is here to root for the Tigers. Zahn, the left-hander, sets. Kemp is waiting, and Zahn steps out the slab for a moment. The Rue's holding on the bag with the floor. This one has just begun in Bloomington. Here's the pitch. He takes the strike. That was a change-up curve across on the outside corner. Tigers play here tomorrow, then they'll have an off day Monday. Tuesday and Wednesday nights, they will be scheduled in Toronto and then go home to play the Yankees. Beginning next Thursday, a four-game set. There's a fastball high on camp two and one. Down with a lifetime mark against the Tigers one and three. He's won six games and lost four this season. Last year, he won his first six games and uh, then uh, settled down to win 12 and drop 14 over the whole season. Young man grew up in Toledo, went to the University of Michigan. Sets and kicks and pitches. A chopper hit up the middle. There's Wolfong. He flips it over to Smalley. One relay to first. Jump in time. It is a fourth out at second base. Wolfong to Smalley. Close play at first, but Kemp beats the relay from the shortstop Smalley. That'll bring the bat star with the man out and the man out. Uh, hitting 281, nine home runs and 44 runs better than for the designated hitter. Carew in a little bit uh, close at first base and uh, not holding right on the bag with Kemp. Prada is low from uh, Jeff Don. Jeff was born in Baltimore, but he makes his home now in California at Woodland Hills. 31 years old. Throws the fourth ball quite off. And here's the pitch. It is a strike. That was a fast one over, one and one. It was Jerry Terrell, who since has left the Twins, who talked John into taking a tryout with the Twins after the Cubs had released him a couple of years ago. Here's a little pop foul back of the plate. Wanniger coming back. Will he have room? And he is up the barrier and makes the catch. it 
Two down, one on, and uh, bring up Jason Thompson, the Tiger first baseman. Number 30. Number 30. Jason hitting 286, 15 home runs, and 39 RBIs. Well, it's interesting as we go around the league to hear the different PA announcers in the various ballparks. And the man who handles that job here and does an efficient job is Bob Casey. Bob reminds me of uh, Pat Piper, the uh, one-time PA announcer at Wrigley Field, Chicago, many years ago. He reminds me of my drill sergeant. <laughs> You better snap two here. <laughs> they say fastball high, ball one. That Piper used to say, get your pencils and cook on ready. <laughs> and then he'd say, play ball. They couldn't play ball unless Pat Piper told them to. <laughs> the ball in close. Two and oh on Thompson. That Piper held that job at Wrigley Field for about uh, 60 odd years, I think, before he passed away. Now the set by Jeff Don, the left-hander, kicks and deals, and tops in it. They drive to left, it'll drop in for a hit. Kip holding his second, now makes the turn, and the ball is picked up by Willie Norwood, the left fielder, who flips it into Smalley, cutting it off in front of Cubbage, the third baseman. Well, the Tigers have two on and two out. They pick up their first hit, and that'll bring up Rodriguez, hitting an even 300, with five home runs and 12 RBIs. Whitaker is a team leader in the percentage, hitting 306. And Rodriguez is next with an even 300 mark. At Tiger Stadium, our PA man is the veteran Joe Gentile. Does an excellent job. He's been there quite a while. Here's the pitch. It's a strike call. Joe was broadcasting uh, baseball back in the mid-30s. No score, we're in Minnesota. Bloomington, Minnesota. The Metropolitan Stadium is the scene of action. Now Rodriguez cuts and misses on a just down change-up strike two on the happy Mexican. Not too happy about that swing right then, but it is two strikes on him with two men on and two men out in the first inning. The game scored Sun has now ducked behind the cloud. Outfield is straight up. Here's the set by Zahn. He pitches, and the ball is high, one and two. Try to keep you up to date on the other games. This one's starting uh, as soon as any of them, so we don't have any other scores posted yet. And there are quite a few night games in the Major League this evening. Don is ready. Rodriguez waits. Here it comes. He swings with a bounding ball to Cubbage. He gloves it. Throw to second. They get the fourth out on Thompson. Cubbage to Wolfong, and the threat is over. No runs, a walk, one hit. A no errors, two left. The field of a half inning. Tigers nothing. The Twins are coming to bat. Well, the Tigers will have one more here with the Twins, then uh, move on to Toronto for games Tuesday and Wednesday before coming home to meet the Yankees for the first time this year, a big four-game series in Detroit, with games on uh, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon, and special events uh, for every one of those dates at Tiger Stadium, beginning with Irish American night next Thursday night. Then the division championships of the pitch, hit, and run program for youngsters 9 to 12, going to be held in connection with a Friday night ball game. Some of the competition will be held during the afternoon, but the hitting trials will be one of the features of uh, the pregame uh, uh, ceremony, after which trophies will be presented to the winners. Four of the division finalists in the pitch, hit, and run program are from the Detroit area. Uh, Lenny Moravchik of Mount Clemens, Mark Hodges of New Hudson, Mike Kaczewski of Dearborn Heights, and Tim Rybicki of Riverview. briefly for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Workers of the World Arise with J.C. McCarthy in the morning music call. Join you Monday through Friday morning at 6 right here on WJR Radio 76 in Detroit.
No score, Twins coming to bat against Wilcox in the last half of the first. They'll lead off with Hoskin Powell, the right fielder. Well, we'd like to salute Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Jack Sophie of Grand Rapids, Michigan, who celebrated their 64th wedding anniversary yesterday, and also Angelo and Rose DePonio, who celebrated their 58th. Now, those uh, folks live in Detroit. Both couples, loyal Tiger rooters, and loyal radio listeners to the Tiger ball game. Well, here's Powell, the left-handed batting right fielder at the plate, hitting 215, and the pitch is in close on him, ball one. Hoskins Powell, P O W E L L. First name H O S K E N. There's the ball wide from uh, Wilcox, 2 and 0 on the leadoff man. Well, the Tigers got a walk and a single, but uh, couldn't do any more. And they went scoreless in their half of the first inning. Second game of the series, Minnesota won last night. Strike call. Allo goes up for the right hand, and the count is 2 and 1 now on Powell. Powell is a 22-year-old outfielder, native of uh, Salem, Alabama. Takes the strike, makes the count even, 2-2. Two -two. Wolfcott uh, checks out with May, rocks and pitches. It is a curve in the dirt, poke out on him. Powell only in his uh, fourth year of pro ball. And his first year in the big league. Last year at Tacoma, he batted 326. He walked ball four. So each of the leadoff men went to the 3 2 count and then got a base on ball. That'll bring the bat small, the switch batter batting left handed. Roy hitting 259, batting uh, slightly better left handed than he does right. Single game tomorrow, and uh, the pitchers tomorrow, Jim Slayton for the Tigers, and the Gulf will be on the mound for the Minnesota Twins. There's a ball outside. He squared away to Bunt, but didn't offer on it. Now Boston uh, gets an early lead in Fenway against Seattle, one to nothing at the end of one. A lot of conversation on the Tiger bus about Bill Lee's departure from the Red Sox during the morning paper that uh, he walked out on Boston. There's a little bunt in the air foul, picked off by Thompson, and uh, Smalley is out. I don't know whether there have been any later developments, but the uh, story in the morning paper out here was that Lee disturbed because his very close friend Bernie Carbo had been sent to Cleveland. Came in and tore his name off the locker and disappeared. And uh, said he would not be back. Here's Rod Carew, the league's leading hitter, coming to the plate, hitting 356, five homers for Rodney, and 33 RBIs. Left hand about a very relaxed looking at the plate, bent at the knees, swings at the top of the shortstop. Samuel has it, sets his second one for the first double play, and the side retired. With no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. At the end of one, Tigers nothing, Minnesota nothing. What does a tribute to Jimmy Durante have in common with the anatomy and song? Those were two recent subjects for Ted Strasser's popular Patterns in Music, a unique program that blends words and music to unusual themes. Whether it's a time, a place, or a mood, each pattern reflects painstaking research and thought that results in premier entertainment every Sunday morning beginning at 8 a.m. Musical Knock Knocks, Ports of Paradise, Jukebox Saturday Night, and The Kiss are reflective of the broad scope and ingenuity that are part and parcel of this top flight weekend presentation of the Goodwill Station. What will be the topic this week? Well, why not join Ted Strasser for the answer? Patterns in Music, Sunday mornings at 8, here on WJR. Radio 76. Get your Tiger's bumper sticker from your Marathon Man, a full-service dealer. Now available at your participating Marathon service station. No purchase necessary. Tiger infielder Steve Dillard uh, back in Detroit awaiting the uh, 
birth of a youngster, Mary uh, Jane, uh, going to the hospital, but so far we've not heard any word from the Dillard uh, family. Here's uh, Mickey Stanley now to lead it off. He'll be followed by May and then Campbell here in the second inning. The game is scored. The batter right fielder, right hand batting Mickey Stanley at the plate. Mickey batting 200. Is a six hits and 30 chips, one on the home run. Two runs batted in for Mick. Jeff Brown, the Minnesota left handed pitches. It is a ball in close for one. Bright and sunny right now at Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington. Part of the practice had to be curtailed because of the rain. Is the 1 0 pitch. It is a change-up low, 2-0 on Stanley. May and then Trammell will follow. Tigers trying to break out of their losing streak. They've lost five straight. Tigers have had it tough ever since they took that trip east and uh, won only one and lost seven to Baltimore and Boston. Stanley fouls back the next pitch, 2-1 the count on him. Now Zahn uh, checks out his time with his catcher, but Schwaniger. Left-hander goes into motion, pitches. Stanley takes the ball outside, three and one. Zahn broke in with the Torna Beach in 68, pitched a no-hitter. That's the first year loss that he pitched a no-hit against St. Pete, and they beat him. Ground ball to third, big hop for Cabbage. The throw to first, so but if Carew is in trying to get Stanley and there's one away. Milk May, Tiger catcher batting now. Don's first big league club was the Dodgers and they traded the Cubs in the 75 season. The Cubs released him. And he caught on with the Twins. May batting 282, seven homers and 22 runs batted in. Playing against the left-hander uh, this afternoon, he takes the ball outside, ball one. It's off the top of my head, I'd have to say this is the first left-hander against whom May has started. Yes, I'm, I'm sure you're right. Here's the motion, the pitch, it is a wide one, a curve, 2-0, the count on Mill. Stanley takes the ball outside. Nothing, nothing, the way it stands, second inning, there's a pop fly back of shortstop. Smalley is there now, behind the bag at second, close it. And there are two down. Here's Alan Trammell. Allen batting 279 in 42 games. He has one home run and 10 runs better than. One hit in the game so far belongs to uh, Jason Thompson of the Tigers. Low curve finds the mark on the outside corner. One strike. John kicks and deals, and it is a ball high, one and one on Tamil. Lou Whitaker, the number nine, about a winning of the on deck circle. Tamil takes the curve low, two and one the count. John up on the mound to get his sign, goes into action. And the Lippers, here's a line foul down past first base into the Minnesota bullpen. Hit the wet surf down there and died in a hurry. Not seen any balls hit in the outfield yet, but I imagine it's very soggy out there and we'll see no roll whatsoever. Two-two, the count on Trammell. Here it is. He swings and fouls it away in the dirt behind the plate. Tigers will be coming home next Thursday night to battle the New York Yankees. Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. 
And Sunday afternoon, four straight games of the Yank. Curve outside, three and two. Special uh, night and days planned for just about every game of that series. Big doings at the ballpark. Here's a pop-up in the short right center going back well Fong. Powell is coming in. Now it's the center fielder Ford, and he's the man who catches it. Now the side out, one, two, three, in the Tigers second. At the end of one and a half innings, Twins nothing, Detroit nothing. When I think of Canada, I think of backpacking in the Canadian Rockies. Marveling at the giant Douglas spurs, passing dozens of lakes that sparkle like diamonds, and finding the best beer I ever tasted. Remember the best, the clear water blue sky tastes of Canada beer. And now the best beer Canada brews is here, so you don't have to go to Canada for Labatt's. It's imported for your special times. Labatt's, brewed in Canada and shipped fresh to you with pride. Labatt's, the clear water blue sky taste of Canada beer. When you think of Canada, think of the best. The best beer I ever tasted. The clear water blue sky taste of Canada beer. Labatt's. Labatt Importers, Amherst, New York. Some more loyal Tiger fans who celebrated anniversaries yesterday. Mr. and Mrs. Clayton Sherwood of Kalkaska, Michigan, number 57. And Mr. and Mrs. Arthur Brand of Livonia, number 50. Also, we'd like to send a birthday greeting to Mrs. Mabel Sheff of Alpena, Michigan, celebrating her 90th birthday. And thank all those folks for their loyalty to the Tiger. Here's Dan Ford. He's got a hitting streak going. He's hit safely in the last 10 games. Later report from Boston, the Red Sox lead Seattle 2 to nothing at the end of two. At Cleveland, the Indians have picked up a three, and they lead Milwaukee in the third inning, 3 nothing. Kansas City and Chicago getting underway. The other games are night games in the American League. Wilcox, the stocky right-handed pitches, and there's a bunt attempt foul. Ford fouls it back in the dirt. And a tall, rangy right-handed batting outfielder hitting 311. Eight homers for him in 38 RBIs. He'll be followed by Weininger, the catcher, and then it'll be uh, Mike Cubby. Bounding ball to short. Trammell charges, has it for the first. Got him, and he broke his bat on that one. One up and one away in the twin second. Here's Butch Weininger. Butch hitting uh, 246. Not catching as regularly as he did last year or the year before his rookie season when he was named the rookie player of the year. Last year he batted 261. The year before that he hit 260. Wilcox ready to go to work. Native of Honolulu, Hawaii. Wilcox delivers that it is a ball low, ball one. Reiniger switch batted outing left hand to the outfield is straight away on Butch. He takes a strike. One and one the count. Cincinnati jumped out in front of the Cardinals. Two nothing at the end of one at Cincinnati. Low curve is over, but it's low. Two and one. Rodriguez wide of the base at the third and even with it. Weiniger to be followed by Covich. And here's Wilcox uh, checking his sign with May and goes to work. As they fly ball at the right field, it's deep. Stanley going over near the wall. Might be out of here. And it is gone. A home run for Weiniger to put the Twins in the lead. One to nothing. His third home run of the campaign. He pulled it down the line. Got it in about two rows just inside the foul ball. Weiniger home run. And the Minnesota Twins go in front, one to nothing in the second inning. Mike Cubby.
Savage will be the next man to bat. All three of Weiniger's home runs have been hit as a left-hand batter. It's the seventh allowed by Wilcox this year. Strike called on the coverage, the left-handed batting third baseman. Hitting 314. They measure the home runs here. That one uh, was hit 337 feet. Here's a fly ball to center. LaFleur there waiting, has it. And there are two down. I don't know exactly how they measure those home runs. I guess they've got a mathematical formula to do it. Well, it's 3.30 right down the line. It was just off the foul ball a little bit and up two, two rows of seats, and I guess they figured 3.07 or 3.37. <laughs> Here's Glenn Adams at the plate now, the left-hand batting designated hitter, and he takes a strike from Wilcox. You know, that one was a little easier to measure than some of them that uh, go way back in those left field seats. Right. Adams hitting 221. He looks at the strike call to Wilcox curve hit the corner. Weiniger's home run, the difference now, one to nothing, twin lead, second inning. There's a ball low, fastball one and two. Pretty distant left field line here, though. 343 down the line. And it gets to 360. It doesn't fall back uh, as much as most, but it's still a pretty good whack out there. There's a strike call. He struck him out. A fastball caught the inside corner. First strikeout for Wilcox, and the inning is over. One run, one hit. No errors, none left. That's the end of two. Twins one, Detroit nothing. <laughs> You know, there's a special additive at your nearby marathon station. Something that can add value to your life and the life of your car. It's something you can get only at your marathon station. What it is, is your marathon man. Because your marathon man is somebody who believes he's not old-fashioned to give people what they pay for, plus a little bit more. He's there to do it better, and do it the way he'd want it done if he were you. If you don't already know him, well, you really ought to. WJR congratulates Len Barnes of Michigan AAA, recent recipient of Michigan State University's Distinguished Alumnus Award. Len, we of Radio 76 salute you. Home run by Wanniger, the difference right now, one nothing. Twins leading the Tigers bat in the third inning, and Whitaker with a four-game hitting streak. And the leading Tiger hitter now will uh, step up to a lead off against Don. Sweet Lou hitting 306 does not have a home run. He has 10 runs batted in. Left-hander against the left-hander. They pull coverage in close to third base. All the infield is in a little bit on Lou. And he takes a curve for a strike call. Left field of Norwood is very shallow. And the other fielders are slightly toward uh, left field. Don kicks and deals. It is a strike, another breaking ball. That's two quick strikes on Lou Whitaker. Tigers have one hit, a single by Thompson. Twins have one hit, a home run by Wanniger. They lead 1-0 in the third. Whitaker looks at a fastball high. One ball and two strikes. Whitaker digging in, waiting. Here it comes. He swings at the bounding ball to second. Wilfong has this one. The throw to Carew is in time to get him by a couple of steps. One up and one away. Here comes the top of the batting order, Ron LaFleur. Ron Watt is the only trip to the plate. That was in the first inning. 
Thompson then picked up a single a couple out later, but the Tigers couldn't do any more than that, and uh, Zahn held him off in the opening inning, set him down one, two, three in the next inning. Zahn's curve is over, but it's slow ball one on the floor. He swings and lifts the ball to reach the seat back of first base. Gentlemen from Stock Rapids uh, ended up with that one. One and one, they caught on Ron. Don checks his time with one again. He backs him away with a curve. Two and one, the count. Bright and sunny right now. Good day in Minnesota. Base hit left field, a sharp grounder past coverage. And LaFleur has a walk and a single now, one for one officially. Kemp will be the batter. He ended the fourth out in the first inning. Left-hander against the left-hander. LaFleur getting a fair-sized lead against the left-hander, draws the throw and gets back safely. Another one over there, he's back again. A maker group of one of the Simpson Bus Ball Express, Tiger Tickets, Simpson Bus Transportation. Good time for everybody. Call 962-9800 for bus ball details. 962 9800. There goes the runner. He's picked off, throw to second, and he is out. Well, Don pulled him, and Ron is out. The pitcher to the first baseman to the shortstop. Two down, nobody on now, and the batter is still Kemp waiting on the first pitch to him this turn to bat. He takes a very wide curveball one. As they fly to left, slicing it is a fair ball in the corner. He might get two. He's digging for second. Norwood up with the ball, fires it back into the shortstop slowly. A stand-up double by Kemp. Man on second, two down, and the batter will be Rusty Stop. That's the third Tiger hit. Outfield straight away, bunching toward the middle on the veteran Rusty Staub. And Zahn delivers. Rusty it's a bounding ball to short. Smalley has it. Here's the throw to Carew. It is in time to retire the side. Of the Tigers, no runs. Two hits, no errors, one man left. We go to the third. Twins one, Detroit nothing. When I traded in my old wagon for an economy one, all my buddies said I'd have to give up a lot. You know, ride, room, and comfort. Well, I didn't give up. I got this Plymouth Valari wagon. I sure didn't give up big car rides. I didn't give up room for six. I didn't give up comfort. Oh, I did give up one thing when I bought my Valari wagon. A lot of trips to the gas station. Don't compromise when you economize. Although your mileage may vary, the EPA rates a one-barrel, six-cylinder Valari wagon with manual transmission at 25 miles per gallon highway, 18 city. Don't give up. Get a Plymouth Valare wagon, America's first choice in wagons over the past two years. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Get For a great value on Plymouth Valare, see your greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Willie Norwood 
Howard will lead off against Wilcox in the third inning. The Twins have the lead over the Tigers, one to nothing. Wilcox has walked one, struck out one, and the home run by Weniger is the only hit that he's allowed, but that's enough to put the Twins into their one to nothing lead. Batting 250 in the 51 games. Right hand hitter. Long stance batter, and uh, Wilcox not quite ready. They folks out in left field dropped something over the uh, barrier there, and Ken Kaiser, who was umpiring at second base, ran all the way out the left center field to pick it up and throw it back in the stand. They've got a jacket out there that fell down, uh, or a sweater, and a cap. Some of that happened, I think, perhaps during the clinic earlier. <laughs> Here's a pitch to Willie Norwood. He fouls it on the screen. Strike one on Willie. That one little boy has been standing next to the fence out in left center field looking down longingly at his sweater since the game began. He dropped it the first inning. <laughs> Good thing it's not cold today. There's a swing and a miss. Strike two. Norwood to be followed by Wilfong, and then the Twins go to the top of the batting order, Powell. Wilcox winds and pitches. There's a foul back this way, right down below us. Gentleman with a Philly batting helmet on, had that one, and then dropped the ball. Uh, he didn't look like Mike Schmidt on that play. <laughs> He's a little disgusted at himself, too. He's talking to himself. You don't get a shot like that many times. Here's a strike two pitch. Norwood swings a chopper hit on the ground to a third. Rodriguez charges, gloves it for the first low. Gets by Thompson, and Norwood is safe. Aurelio might have had a shot at that one, but he bobbled the ball just momentarily before he let it go, and it'll be scored as a single. Tough play for the third baseman. Second hit off Wilcox, and the batter will be Wolfong now. Radio was throwing off the wrong foot. It was really off balance when he let that one go. It just didn't look like Rodriguez uh, and his normal throws. He got the discombobulated or whatever it is by bobbling the ball. One nothing. Twins lead it. Here's the pitch. He takes the ball outside. Wolfong, the left hand about it. He. Uh, Leadoff man Powell is waiting on deck. Pretty good size lead for Willie Norwood, but he's not moving. There's a bunt off the mound comes Wolfcott, steals it, flips it to Whitaker covering the bag at first. Wolfong is out on the sacrifice. Of the pitcher to the second baseman covering, Norwood takes second. Falls out for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Jimmy Lunch leads your bunch to lunch. Monday through Friday mornings from 10 to noon here at America's Great Radio Station, WJR Detroit. Powell at the plate. He walked his first time at bat against Wilcox. one nothing. Twins lead, third inning. Left hand about it takes a curve. It's too high, ball one. There's a ball outside. Two and all oh, the count on him. Roy Smalley waiting on deck. Here's a strike in above the knees. Hoskin Powell with a count of two and one now. One out, man at second. Twins ahead on the home run by Wanniger. One nothing. They're batting in the third against Wilcox. Now Milt goes to the set position. And Powell hits a line drive. Spear by Rodriguez. And then as he started to throw the ball, he dropped it. It is... Recorded as an out. Here comes Mock. He is not agreeing with the umpire third base, Riley. 
Rodriguez caught the ball, then he tried to extract it from his glove and throw over to get a double play to double up Norwood. He dropped it then, and Mox is saying, well, he dropped it too soon. Ronnie is saying he did not. It was an out. So there are two down and Spalding bats next. Fouled out to Thompson at first base, the only time he's been to bat. One nothing, twins ahead, third inning. Molly swings with a bounding ball on the right side. It's two for a base hit. Rounding third, headed home is Norwood, and he will score. Out of the reach of the Tiger second baseman Whitaker, who made a diving effort to the glove side and couldn't come up with the ground. The ball was not hit very hard, but it was one of those eye hits. Here's Carew, who bounced into a double play unassisted to the shortstop Campbell and thrown over to first base in the first inning. League batting champion Rod Carew. He takes the ball in too close. Carew's first year was 67, and uh, the then manager, Sam Mealy, didn't think much of Carew. He wanted to send him back. Calvin uh, Griffith didn't want him to go, though. Here's a pitch, and it is a ball low. So Billy Martin, who was a coach at that time, worked with Carew, and he felt like uh, Carew should stay around. So Mr. Griffith was the boss, and Carew stayed. And then later on, uh, Mealy left before the season was over. Here's a 2-0 pitch. Foul out of play, off his foot. Later report from uh, Cleveland there in the fourth inning over there now. 3-0 Cleveland leading Milwaukee. Boston head of Seattle, 2-0 in the third. Cincinnati leading the St. Louis Cardinals, 2-0 in the second. No other games to report on yet. 2-1 pitch coming up. Carew takes a slow curve over but low, 3-1. Rodriguez wide of the back at third, but about even with it. Now Wilcox ready. The pitch on the way. He takes the strike. It was a breaking ball. Full count on him. one nothing. Twins lead the Tigers. Third inning. He swings and fouls it away down at the plate. Dan Ford waiting at the on-deck circle. Now Smalley back at first base. Thompson's not going to hold directly on the bag with him. He'll play behind him. Step by Wilcox. Carew waits and uh, takes the ball outside. He walked him. That'll put two men on and bring up Dan Ford. Second walk off Wilcox. Ford uh, about to shortstop Trammell, the only time he's been to bat today. Twins lead it 2 nothing. They have three hits. The Tigers have three. Infield back now with two on and two out, and Ford takes a slow curve high ball one. Ford almost turns his back to the pitcher. Close stance. He swings and misses on a high tight one. One and one to count on Dan. Sun's behind the clouds now. However, the weatherman uh, has uh, told everybody the rains are about over. But out in this part of the country, you never know.
as they cut in the mid. Game continues at the beginning of side two after a 60 second delay.
is a cut in the mist. What is it makes this part of the country so hard to predict the weather? I don't know. Perhaps the, much like Michigan, Ernie, uh, it's where the, the lows and the highs seem to meet. You've got that Arctic cold uh, air coming down, uh, meeting the moist, warm lows coming up from the south, and it meets out here uh, up the Mississippi Valley. They have a tough time with the weather out here. Here's the 1-2 pitch now on uh, Danny Ford. 2-0 Twins lead. He swings at a fly ball to right field. In the corner, Stanley coming over. He'll have room. He has it. And the side retired. One run on uh, two hits. There were no errors. Two runners are left at the end of three. Twins, two. Tigers, nothing. I've got cleats on my fingers, oil on my shoes. I've always heard of the hood. But it wouldn't change places with anyone else, even if I could. I worked on every car, big and small, every kind of engine, too. And there's one thing that applies to them all, whether they're old or new. You can't buy a better plug for any kind of car than champion. You can't buy a better plug no matter where you are than champion. This is Oscar Frenette with an invitation to Discover Detroit, mornings at 5.40 and 11.30, here on Radio 76, WJR Detroit. Two-nothing, twins in the lead, two runs, three hits, no errors, Tigers, no runs, three hits, no errors. Here comes the fourth inning, and here comes Paul Carey. All right, Ernie, thank you. Jason Thompson will lead it off for the Tigers here in the bottom of the fourth, the top of the fourth inning. Jason single to left, his first time up, as one of the three Tiger hits off the left-hander Jeff Zahn. Thompson, Rodriguez, and Stanley, the three scheduled to face Zahn here in this inning. There's a strike called on Jason. Thompson with 15 home runs, 39 runs batted in. A left-hander delivers. Another strike. That was an off-speed breaking ball. Smalley shifting around towards second. With Will Fong uh, filling the gap between first and second. A pitch from Zahn. Low and inside with a fast one. Jeff is now 31 years old. Starred at the University of Michigan. Uh, from Obie Benedict's team out there in the late 60s. The pitch. Bouncer foul behind the plate. 2-2 Two -two count on Jason Thompson. Well, they've got a line where the tarp roll is resting through much of the daytime here. Out behind second. Actually, all night long after the game ended last night, they covered it up. It's kind of a rut out behind the skin of the infield. The pitch. Little tapper foul. Jason just protecting the plate that time. But they certainly have the rain up here in this neighborhood. A total of six rain outs here and four on the road for the Twins so far this year. The pitch. Swung on it, pops foul. Weininger coming back off of the mask. He may have a shot. Nope, it's about four rows back in the box seat. This, of course, is also the home of a Minnesota Viking. Now, this field gets a lot of use on a year-round basis, and it's the home of the Minnesota Kicks of the North uh, American Soccer League. Running a series of articles in the uh, local papers here about the phenomenon of the Kicks. Not so much the appeal of soccer, as it turns out, that brings the crowd. There's a line drive down the left field line, maybe in for extra bases. It's a fair ball by a couple of feet, bounces against the wall. Thompson will hold it second with a long double into the corner. 
Well, the Tigers have their second two base hit. They have still to score against the Twins. Thompson is two for two. And the batter now will be already on Rodriguez. I know that uh, the soccer officials in Detroit have pointed to the attendance figures here and out in Seattle and uh, down in uh, Tampa. They've had excellent crowds and in New York, of course. But this has been kind of a phenomenon up here. Wondering what the appeal of soccer was in this particular area. It doesn't have any real uh, bases in history here. There's a ground ball, fair ball down the left field line by Rodriguez. Thompson will come in to score. Over to pick up the ball is Norwood, and Rodriguez has a double. Back-to-back -back doubles by the Tigers. Lift them into a, uh, give them a run here, and cut the Twins lead to 2-1. to one. That was just over the bag, down the left field line by Rodriguez. And it brings up Mickey Stanley. Just to uh, resolve that discussion about soccer, as it turns out, it be, has become a happening up here. A happening in the parking lots more than anything else, and not in the stadium. It was not the appeal of the game itself that brought all the fans out to soccer here, and that continues to bring them out. It is a gathering of the fans in the parking lots before and after, inside for a ball. And Ernie and I were told here uh, today that they, in fact, uh, began to ticket the people in the parking lot if they weren't in the stands. Once the game began, if they, if they remained in the parking lot, they were being issued tickets. That is, <laughs> tickets of arrest. Here's the pitch. Strike call to Stanley, one and one. franchise began here you know back in 1961 they had a lot of tailgating out here with people coming in from all over the plains area outside the stanley two and one got to be quite a big thing the caravans coming in from north dakota and northern and northwestern minnesota but it has uh, dwindled in recent years but now it's begun again with a soccer franchise here Ground ball foul, look out, off the edge of the Twins' dugout, bouncing up into the box seat. Looks like Stanley took that one out of the glove of Weininger. Conversation with the mound, now Roy Smalley, the shortstop, out to talk to Zahn. Tigers trail 2-1, to one. they've got a runner at second with nobody out here in the fourth inning, Rodriguez, who has driven in the Tiger run. set by Zahn. And the pitch. Swung on a bouncer over the mound in behind second. Wilfong backhands a throw to first. He's got him at first base. Good play by Wilfong. Barely nipping Stanley at first as Rodriguez takes third. One down now. A runner at third and the batter will be Milt May. May popped out to Smalley his first time up there, bringing the infield in tight all around. Left fielder Norwood playing very shallow out there. Here's a pitch to May. He takes it for a call strike. Bill Haller calling the balls and strikes today. Tigers have the potential tying run at third in Rodriguez, the pitch. Ball outside, one and one on May. Indians lead Milwaukee after four innings in Cleveland, three to nothing. Now Zahn ready, kicks and delivers a bouncer foul down the first baseline. Well, the Brewers have really been hot of late. They have reeled off nine straight wins. Boston has won seven in a row, or rather eight in a row, and the Red Sox trail now at the end of three innings. Seattle in front three to two. And some hot clubs in that Eastern Division of the American Lake. Baltimore, Boston, Milwaukee. The Yankees were struggling uh, to a degree. Swing and a miss by May. He is struck out. 
Wells having a tough time against the left-hander Jeff Zahn. Lance Parrish went all the way in a long ball game last night behind the plate. Normally Lance would get a start against a left-hander. But with the day game following the night game, Mild is in there in action today. So there are two down. The infield can relax. As Zahn uh, notches his first strikeout. The batter is now Alan Trammell. Two to one, the Twins lead the pitch to Allen. He swings and pops it up. Out behind second, Wilfong backing out. Powell coming in behind him. He makes the catch. The right fielder, Powell. Now well, that's all for the Tigers. They get one run on a pair of doubles. No errors. One man left after three and a half innings. It's the Twins two, the Tigers one. lovers right now you can get a large round pizza from little caesars with anything you want on it for the price of an identical small pizza that's right a large round pizza with all the trimmings for the price of an identical small just bring in the special coupon you'll find in your local newspaper or tv book and they'll do the rest mouth-watering goodness at a special low price no wonder pizza lovers everywhere love little caesars pizza little caesars pizza a winner any way you slice it The Twins lead the Tigers as Minnesota comes to bat here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Butch Weiniger, who uh, gave the Twins the lead with a home run in the second inning, will lead it off. He'll be followed by Cubbage and Adam. Looking with the glasses, I hadn't noticed it last night, and I don't see it again today. They used to have uh, a couple of spots in the upper deck and that left field grandstand here at Metropolitan Stadium, denoting the long-distance tape measure home runs by... The longtime twin slugger Harmon Killebrew, but apparently the seats have been painted over. They had some black and white stripes painted uh, in the area where Killebrew had hit his tape measure jobs, and they're gone now. There's a strike called on Weiniger. Feet close together, Wilcox rocks back the pitch. Hello, one and one on Butch. That left field grandstand, the double tiered grandstand, is really the main uh, grandstand for football. There's a pop up foul. Rodriguez chasing over toward the box seats. He may not have room. Nope. Over the barrier and off the aisleway there. Well, the Cincinnati Reds, uh, buoyed by a no-hitter from Tom Seaver last night in front of St. Louis early in their game today, 2-0 in the second inning. There's a pitch to Weiniger. He swings and misses. Struck him out. Second strikeout for Wilcox. That'll bring up Mike Cubby. Interesting piece that the wire services had in uh, the morning newspaper here in Minneapolis today. Uh, Sieber was uh, talking with one of his teammates about a previous no-hit bid as they were driving into uh, the ballpark in Cincinnati yesterday. The first pitch here to Cubbage is taken outside. And they're talking about Bill Wallace, who was the outfielder for the Cubs at the time, broke up a no-hit bid by Sieber with two out that day, Wallace yesterday had been traded uh, there's a foul behind the plate out of play and Seaver uh, was remembering that no hit bit as he drove to the ballpark and sure enough last night he managed to go all the way uh, Wallace had broken it up with a single with two out on the ninth inning at uh, one time but not last night Seaver notches the first in Riverfront Stadium and his first there's a slow curve outside. Two and one on Cubbage. One out, nobody on here in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Twins lead the Tigers two to one. Tigers have out hit the Twins five to three. The 
pitch to the left-hand batter. Line drive, base hit to center field. Cubby, excellent hitter, uh, lines that one out over Whitaker's head. So there's one on with one out, and the batter will be Glenn Adams. Here's a guy with power, Adams. He took a called third strike his first time up. Adams, a D8 today for Gene Mock's team. Tigers in double play depth. The pitch is low, good pick up by May. Twins got a run in the second, one in the third. The Tigers got one in the top of this fourth inning. Cubby did first with one away. Stretch by Wilcox. There's a the pitch. Swung on and bounced foul at the plate. Ball on the strike on Glenn Adams. Twins got him uh, from the San Francisco organization, bought him a couple of years ago. The pitch from Wilcox. Half swing by Adams, uh, and he checked in time. They appealed to third, but Mike Riley said he had checked in time. That did not come across the plate. That's that misconception that you have to break the wrist. Not it at all. They uh, asked the umpire down the line if that bat had cleared the plane of the plate. Here's the set by Wilcox, the pitch. Curve is ripped foul down the first baseline. Tony Oliva with a little Adagio dance down there in the coaching box. It's about as quick as you're going to see Tony move anymore after all of those knee operations of his. The pitch. Adam swings and misses. He struck him out for the second straight time. Well, there are two down with the Cubby at first. The batter will be Willie Norwood. Willie had an infield hit in the third inning. Well, that coach's box still has casual water in it. That part of it, uh, of the field, was simply not covered by the top overnight. And before the game, Oliva crowding the far end away from the water. There's a curve a little low. Ball one. Willie Norwood, no relation to the uh, Willie Norwood, who uh, has performed a number of years in the National Basketball Association. Throw to first, back in time is Cubby. There's the set, the pitch. Low for the ball. Wilcox possesses just about the world's biggest dog. I shouldn't say biggest dog, but certainly one of the meanest looking dogs named Smokey. A pitch from Milt. Swung on. Fly ball to deep center field. LaFleur goes back. He has the room. He's under it. And makes the catch. That retires the Twins in the fourth inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and a man left. After four innings of play, it's Minnesota 2, the Tigers 1. Can you afford to throw money away at the supermarket, in your car, where you bank? City National Bank knows every nickel counts. That's why there's a big difference between City National and those other banks that charge you for writing checks. Nobody, nobody has got, for City National Bank has got. City National Bank saves you money again with combo checking. Keep a minimum of $200 in checking or savings. You write all your checks without charge. All your checks without charge. Combo checking. No other bank in Michigan has it. No statement fees. No charge for checks. Don't throw your money away on annoying service charges on checks. Come on in and open a City National Bank charge-free combo checking account now. You got it? Nobody. Also available at National Bank of Rochester and First Citizens Bank in Troy. Get your Tigers bumper sticker from your Marathon Man, a full-service dealer. Now available at your participating Marathon service station. No purchase necessary. Oh, 
best of your wishes uh, on this occasion for a lady in Hopkins, Michigan, uh, celebrating her birthday today, Genevieve Finkbeiner. A tracker salute. Here's Will, uh, Lou Whitaker leading off for Detroit here in the fifth inning. Sweet Lou grounded out to second. His only time up against the left-hander Jeff Zahn. Jeff is G-E-O-F-F, -F, the British spelling. Here's the pitch. Strike called on Lou. Lou doesn't believe it. He didn't hear it from Haller. And did a double take. Uh, walks out of the batter's box. the pitch. Low and away. One and one. Edgar Kennedy, he did the slow burn. I don't think he was the double take artist. There are some others, though, that in the movies who excelled at the old the double and triple take. Punt foul by Whitaker. Don has won six and dropped four. He pitches swung on a bouncer down the first base line. Uh, Carew near the back fields it, touches it just ahead of Whitaker to get him. Oh, Rod didn't dare uh, go very far from the bag because he would have had trouble outlegging Whitaker back up the line. So he waited for the ball and it arrived to him in time. Well, there's one down on the Tiger fifth inning, and Ron LaFleur will be the batter. Well, Ron has walked and singled in this ball game. He was picked off in the third inning and erased on a force out in the first. A pitch from Zahn. Check swing, it's a ball. Ron still insists that he has corrected some things and he is ready to move that average up now. Inside, 2-0. and oh. I reminded him after the game last night that he said last night was the time he was going to turn it around. He went one for five last night. He said, well, that's all right. When he turned it around last year, he went one for five the first game. Foul to the screen. Two and one on LaFleur. If you don't turn it around, hitting 200. Now the pitch to Ronnie. Curve is up high. Three and one on LaFleur. Three switching directions here at Metropolitan Stadium. The pitch from Zahn, swung on and fouled into the upper deck on the right field side. One out, the base is empty here in the fifth inning. The Tigers trail the Twins, two to one. There's a ground ball to third. Cubbage has the hop, guns it to first, and he just got him. Uh, Cubbage does not really have an artillery arm over there. And he got it to Carew in time. There are two down. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Detroit. Here's Steve Kemp. Kemp has doubled and grounded into a force out. His double, a soft fly ball down the left field line. The pitch to him. He takes the strike. Now the pitch from Zahn. Low for a ball. We got big crowd reaction, and I, I think they had some water standing in the upper deck, and it somehow started to come down over the edge, dripping all over people down below. We had some in an eaves drop out ahead here, in front of us, blowing inside for a ball. Upper deck has just been uh, catching all the rain. I noticed last night coming out here, they had people all over the stands with big brooms uh, pushing the water around, trying to get it to the gutters. There's a strike called on Kemp. Two and two on Steve. Oh, those people are drenched down there. Now Zahn delivers. Ground ball to the right side. Carew backhands it. Good play. Underhand to Zahn. He makes the foot up. A 
fine play by Rod Carew as he swept to his right, backhanded the ball, and underhanded to the pitcher covering to beat Kemp by a set. For the Tigers, no hits, no runs, no errors, and nobody left after four and a half innings. It's still the Twins two, the Tigers one. Yeah, I'm just filling the tank and checking the oil. Your marathon man still thinks wiping your windshield, checking the air in your tires, and the water in your batter are part of what you pay for when you come into his station. And your marathon man still knows how to service your car when it needs it, and how to treat you the way he likes to be treated when he's a customer. So if you haven't already gotten to be friends with your marathon man, well, you really ought to. You'll definitely get what you pay for, and probably a little bit more. Bottom of the fifth inning here at Metropolitan Stadium. Jim Clayton uh, will go tomorrow against the Twins, and it'll be Dave Gold coming back for Minnesota, right-handed. There's Rob Wilfong, left-hand hitting second baseman, leading it off. He had a sacrifice spot. His only time up against Wilcox. Milt delivers, swung on and missed the big curve. The pitch from Wilcox, inside and low, one and one now on Will Fogg. Well, delivers, that curve is in, that, uh, he just waited on that, he wasn't going to have anything to do with it. One and two on Will Fogg. He cuts and misses, struck him out. Well, Will Fogg not hitting for average by any means, but he's doing the job in the field for the Twins. He was one of those who uh, won what they call the Silver Glove Award. You have the Gold Glove Award at the Major League level, but on the Minor League level, they give out the uh, Silver Glove Awards to the top fielding artists in the minors, and Will Fong has won that. First pitch to Powell is inside for a ball. Wilcox now has four strikeouts. Outside. Two and all the count on Hoskin Powell. The rookie from Pensacola, Florida. The wind up, the pitch from Wilcox. Low, three and oh. Oh, Wilcox said. Uh, motion the 3-0 pitch there's a called strike Powell started the first not going to get very far one out nobody on here in the bottom of the fifth inning the twins with runs in the second and third inning the Tigers with their run in the fourth two to one Minnesota round ball on a high hop to Whitaker a little short cross to Thompson two down I'll bring up Roy Smalley One for two for the switch hitting shortstop. He hit a pop foul to Thompson his first time up trying to butt. Then hit a bleeder through the middle, uh, or actually past the glove of Whitaker into right field to score a run in the third inning. There's a hard smash past Thompson, fair ball. Down into the bullpen. Smalley around first, digging for second. Stanley up with the ball, not in time. A two-base hit for Smalley. Right field line, Smalley on with a two out double. And the batter will be Rod Carew. Well, everybody seems relieved up here in Minnesota. Calvin Griffith and uh, Carew among them for the fact that no deal was made before the trading deadline for Rod Carew. Rod had reportedly turned down a multi-year contract offered by the Twins, but then made the inference the other day that he's looking forward to further negotiations. There's a call strike. He had said earlier 
that he would not sign another contract with Minnesota. His left foot is really out of the batter's box as he leans back on it. Outside for a ball, one and one on Carew. Smalling at second, two down. Both clubs have five hits now. Six-time batting champion, Rod Carew. Waiting on Wilcox to set the pitch. Ball two, outside. Carew won his uh, first batting title in 1969. A bouncer foul to the right of the plate. Second time he won the title, hitting just 318. That was the lowest he hit to win the title. And that year, uh, Carew did not have a single home run. He became the first American League batting champion ever to win the title without a home run. Outside, it's a full count now on Carew. Rod has proven, uh, especially in the last three seasons, that he can hit the long ball. Inside, ball four, Carew uh, draws the walk as he danced out of the way of that one. Well, that's the third walk given up by Wilcox, puts runners at first and second with two down, and brings up Dan Ford. Ford's 10-game hitting streak. Here's a weather update from WJR News. The National Weather Service has issued a severe thunderstorm warning effective until 4.30 this afternoon for Gratiot and Clinton counties at north of, Lans north of Lansing in Michigan. Heavy thunderstorms have been reported in the vicinity of Greenville and Mount Carm County, moving to the east at nearly 50 miles an hour. Residents in the area should be on the alert as these thunderstorms move across the area. Again, heavy thunderstorms have been reported in the vicinity of Greenville and Mount Carm County, and the National Weather Service has issued a severe thunderstorm warning effective until 4.30 this afternoon for Gratiot and Clinton counties. Bill Smith, WJR News. The pitch swung on and missed two strikes on Dan Ford. Originally a member of the Oakland A's, uh, Dan Ford. Charlie Finley picked him number one in the 1970 free agent draft. Two on, two off, the pitch to Ford. Swung on, foul to back into the sand. That may jar some more of that water loose. Looks like a convention of school buses out on the parking lot down the left field side. A parking lot filled with a big yellow. That clinic this morning for the youngsters and they filled up the bleachers. Two strikes on Ford. The pitch from Wilcox. He wasted it outside. Ford bent over and laid off. We'll be on the air again tomorrow at 2 o'clock Michigan time or any pregame show in the wind-up of this series. And the Tigers, if they can make the connections, will get to Toronto late Sunday night and have a two-game set beginning Tuesday. Ground ball right back to Wilcox. He knocks it out, picks it up, and throws the first to get him. That ball hit like a shot. Wilcox got the glove up, and it hit him off the glove and the chest, I believe. Uh, for a moment, he didn't find the ball, but he found it quickly enough to throw out Ford. That's all for the Twins. No runs, a hit and a walk, no errors, and two are left after five innings of play. It's the Twins two, the Tigers one. If you haven't read the new AM edition of the news, you just don't know what you're missing. Exclusive new columns like Where the Action Is. It's an early look at the stock market, betting odds, even lottery numbers. You're missing eye-openers with Margie Coon and her views on all the latest trends. Plus the comment page with the timely observations of people like Pete Waldmeyer, Nicholas Von Hoffman, and Bill Malden. The new AM News at newsstands at 6.30 every morning. It's the first good news of the day.
Reading the Detroit News AM edition can make you smarter. And from now until June 30th, richer. With a new game called Joker Poker. You play it like poker, with cards that appear Monday through Friday in the AM edition of the news. Two of a kind could win you $50. A royal flush, $5,000. Joker Poker. No purchase necessary. Rules and entries available through the Detroit News or in the new AM edition. Like they say, it's the first good news of the day. Only now, it's even more so. This game is being brought to you by Labatt. For beer at its finest, call for Labatt. By marathon dealers and distributors, people who've got together to do it better. By the Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealers, who've got Horizon Motor Trend's Car of the Year. By Champion Spark Plugs, you can't buy a better plug than Champion. By the Detroit News, for the first good news in sports every morning, read the new Detroit News AM edition. By City National Bank, where you can get combo checking. And by Little Caesars Pizza, a winner any way you slice it. Now, more Tiger baseball action with Ernie Harwell and Paul Carey. Rusty Saab leading off the six, took one low. There's a ground ball to the right side. Grabbed by Will Fong. The throw to Carew, he got him a fine play by Will Fong. He has shown that he can go a long way to both his right and his left. And that time, he took that ball out of right field. They get stopped. One away. That'll bring up Thompson. Jason is a perfect two for two against the left-handers on. Both his hits to left field going with a pitch. He singled him up in the first inning and then doubled into the uh, left field corner in the fourth. Jason scored the Tigers' run in the fourth on the double by Rodriguez. Despite the left-hander, they still play him to uh, pull the ball to right. The pitch to Jason. Swung on and fouled at the plate. Don has the sign from Weiniger. Here's the pitch. A punt attempt missed by Thompson. Tried to catch Cubbage, who was laying way back at third. Oh, Thompson has to protect the plate now with two strikes on him. One out, nobody on here in the Tigers' sixth inning. The Twins in front, two to one. Homer by Weiniger in the second inning. And then a leader of a single by Smalley in the third, bringing in the Twins' runs. Back-to-back -back doubles by Thompson and Rodriguez scored the Tiger run. Check swing by Jason. It's outside, one and two. Don kicks and fires, low, two and two on Thompson. Don has a fine earned run average of 2.77. He has been in 14 games, all of them starts, including this one. Only one of the pitchers pitched more innings, Erickson. There's a fly ball to right field, it's fairly deep, but backing up is Powell, has the room, makes the catch on the morning track. Two down as Thompson flies deep to right, and that'll bring up Rodriguez. Alvarado, one for two, drove in the Tiger run with his double in the fourth inning. After five innings at Cleveland, the Indians lead the Brewers three to one. After five at Fenway, Seattle still has that three-two lead over the Red Sox. A little high to Rodriguez, ball one. They may be held up by rain at Chicago, I don't know. Uh, they posted the starters some time ago for the Kansas City White Sox game, but nothing reporting in. 2-0 count on Rodriguez, two out, bases empty in the Tigers' sixth inning. The one, Cincinnati, or one uh, National League game going right now, St. Louis leading Cincinnati 3-2 in the fifth inning. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed by Rodriguez. That was a slow one by Zahn. And Aurelio, looking for the fastball with a 2-0 count, was way out in front. Azan rocks back. Here's the pitch to Aurelio. He swings and misses again. He pulled the string on that one.
I have two uh, games scheduled for this afternoon. One at San Francisco with the Mets and Giants, but they've got it posted as a night game here. At any rate, it'd be a late start here. Outside for a ball. So it's a full count now on Rodriguez. The wind up by Zahn. Here's the pitch. Swung on a bouncer to the right side. Will Fong to his left has it. The flip to Carew. He's out. The Tigers go down one, two, three in the sixth inning. The Twins come up for their bat. With a score, Minnesota 2, Detroit 1. Bottom of the sixth inning here at Bloomington, Minnesota. The Minnesota Twins with a 2-1 to lead over the Tigers. The Tigers trying to end a five-game losing streak here in the middle game of this three-game series. Kind of gloomy here in the ballpark now, but it doesn't really appear like rain. Hits are even at five apiece, but the Twins have the two-to-one edge. And here's Butch Weiniger, who has one of those five. It's a big one, a home run, right down the right field line in the second inning. Switch hitter, he'll bat left-handed, of course, against Wilcox. The pitch to him. He buckles out of the way, it's inside. Here's the pitch to Butch. Outside for a ball. Weiniger is quite a story, of course, making the jump from single-A ball to the majors, becoming rookie player of the year, the same year that Fidrich was the rookie pitcher of the year. I did 3-0 on Butch. Got married over the winter, Butch did. There's ball four. Well, that's the fourth walk given up by Wilcox. And it brings up Cubbage. One for two for Mike. He's single to right center in the fourth inning. Cubbage hitting very well again this year for the Twins. 314 mark coming into the ball game. Here's the set. The pitch to Mike. He squares. It's a good punt right out in front of the plate. Milt has it. He has to go to first. He took a look at second. Decided that the better not take a chance on Weiniger uh, down at second and went to first. So they put out made by Whitaker at first base. It goes 2 4 on the sacrifice punt by Cubby. Weiniger at second with one away, and Glenn Adams, the DH, will be the batter. He has struck out twice. He was caught looking in the second inning and then fanned uh, swinging in the fourth. Pitch from Wilcox, a slow curve for a ball. Look to second by Milt. Here's the pitch. Strike called on Adams. The mention of Fitridge. Adams comes from great old Adams country, Northbridge, Massachusetts. Ground ball down the first base line. Thompson makes the play unassisted at first on Adams as the runner Weininger moves to third. So there are two down, and Willie Norwood will be the batter. Norwood has an infield single. In two trips, he fly to center his other time up. around by the youngsters here in the middle innings. Many of them have been here a long time because of that morning clinic. And they're getting a little restless. Here's the stretch by Wilcox. The, two, the pitch to him is a strike. He got the curve in on Norwood. Right hand batter. Pitch from Wilcox. Half swing, did he go around? No, they say no. Lou DeMuro down at first. Uh, palms flat, waving him in the air. Nope, he checked in time. One and one on Norwood.
strike called. A ball and two strikes now with two down and Weininger at third. Wilcox season resembling somewhat his season last year. He won his first six decisions and dropped a pair. Swing and a miss. Norwood strikes out. That's all for the Twins in the sixth inning. No runs, a walk, no errors. One left after six innings of play. It's still Minnesota 2, Detroit 1. During this break in the action, here's an update from WJR News. President Carter assured American workers in the Panama Canal Zone today that their jobs and rights will be protected under Panamanian rules. But he also made it clear that, like it or not, they must help in relinquishing control of the waterway. Many Canal Zone residents hostile to the treaties Carter helped formally ratify yesterday apparently carried out their threats to boycott the president's speech. And a few showed up wearing Keep Our Canal t-shirts and shirts printed with slogans derogatory of the president. In the South African ghetto of Soweto today, police opened fire and used tear gas to disperse hundreds of black youths who stoned a police car and a bus after a memorial observance on the second anniversary of the Soweto riots. There's no word on casualties. Police are hoping that a special 12-member team will be able to figure out what happened to a 7-year-old Detroit boy who's been missing for more than two months. State officials say the computer cross-check method that left the, the indictments of 61 alleged welfare cheaters yesterday will be used again in the future. Detroit's temperature 86, Bill Smith, WJR News. Well, this broadcast is made possible by the Detroit Baseball Club and the American League and is intended for the private use of our listening audience. Rebroadcast or other use of this play-by-play -play is prohibited unless prior consent is received from WJR Detroit, the Detroit Tiger Baseball Club, and the American League. The announcers for this broadcast are selected and employed by WJR Radio and the Detroit Tiger Baseball Club. Two to one, the Twins lead the Tigers through six innings. Mickey Stanley to lead off the seventh and back to the microphone. Here's Ernie Harwell. Hank Paul at each club with five hits. Neither team's made an error. It's been a close one all the way. Seventh inning uh, getting started. Jeff Zahn, the left-hander, pitches to Stanley, who takes a curve in close ball one. Mickey has bounced to third and grounded to second base. Outfield, uh, bunching him toward the middle, the infield back. They've got the coverage over near the back at third, and Stanley steps away for a moment. Now the left hand is on, ready, kicks and deals. It's a strike call. they got a breaking pitch on the outside corner. One and one, the count on Stanley. He'll be followed by May, and then it'll be Trammell in the Tiger seventh inning. Tigers got their run in the fourth on back-to-back uh, -back doubles by Thompson and Rodriguez. The first two minutes batted in that inning. There's a line chop foul in the seats back of third. One and two on Stanley. Minnesota picked up its first run in the second on uh, Weiniger's third home run of the year and then scored again in the third on a single by Norwood, a sacrifice by Wilfong, and a single by Smalley to bring him home. And that run right now, the difference in this game, the second game of the three-game series. Stanley swings, fly ball to right. That'll reach the seat back of the, the bullpen of the Minnesota Twins. One and two, they caught on Mickey. Don looking into Weiniger to get the sign. The veteran left-hander now checking his catcher out. It goes into action again. The pitch is a ball outside. He's in the fork ball wide, 2-2. Two -two. Cloudy skies in Bloomington. We've had a little bit of everything since we've been here. Rain, thunder, lightning, sunshine. Waiting on a 2-2 two -two delivery. It's the plate is Stanley. He swings. There's a looper that'll drop into left center field for a hit. Mickey Stanley leads it off with a single to left center. The ball picked up by the left fielder Norwood and bounced into Wolfong in second. And the Tigers have a man on and nobody down in their seventh inning with Milk May stepping in. May has popped to short and struck out. They've got coverage uh, in close on the grass at third base, looking for the bump possibility here. 
Carew will hold at the first base for the run of Stanley. Zahm will try to keep Mickey close to that left-hand uh, set motion over there. And the bunt is on, but he takes the ball outside. Didn't offer on the pitch, ball one. Campbell will be the next Tiger batter. Two to one to score. The Twins lead it. Now May waits on the next one. Spears the month. Takes a ball just outside. Two and oh to count on Milk. set by Jeff Tom. A pitch, it is a strike called. He took a fastball in above the knees. Again, ready to bunt. Man on first, Sammy represents the tying run. Coverage in even a little closer now down from third. Here's the set by Zahn. And the pitch, he swings and fouls it away. Back of the plate. Let's fall to station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Jay Roberts joins you as you meet your new day on Night Flight 76, evenings at 11.30 here on the Goodwill Station, WJR Radio 76, Detroit. May uh, stepping out, looking down at third base coach, Freddie Hatfield. Two to the count on milk. Two to one, Minnesota leading, seventh inning, man at first, nobody out. John Seth holds it at the belt, now pitches. Here's a cut and a miss. He struck him out. So May goes down swinging, and the batter will be Trammell. The second strikeout for Zahn, and each time he struck out May. Straight up on Allen. Seattle and Boston are now tied 3-3 there in the eighth inning. Cleveland and Milwaukee are tied 3-3, and they're in the eighth inning. Trammell's flat out twice, once to center, once to right. And he takes the ball in close, ball one. In the National League, uh, the only day game uh, that's posted here, St. Louis leads Cincinnati 3-2. They're in the seventh. That's the Cincinnati. Don Reddy, Trammell waits. Here it comes. He swings too early. Misses throw to second. Stanley is out at second base. On the attempted field, they cut down Stanley. Trying to go to Wolfong, the catcher to the second base. Well, they are two outs now. The base is empty, and the count on the travel is one ball and one strike. Two runs, five hits for Minnesota. One run, six hits for Detroit. Don Wines delivers. Here's a bounding ball to the left side. It's through for a base hit. And the Tigers get a man on with two down. Trammell wraps a single to left, and here comes Lou Whitaker. He's gone out twice on uh, ground balls, once to second, once to first. This is the second time in the game the Tigers had followed. An unsuccessful steal attempt for the base hit. It is a curve in at the shoulder. Ball one, the count on him. Feel a little bit to left on Whitaker. The left field of Norwood is very shallow on Lou. And he swings, taps one to short. Small to his right, has it, throw to Wilfong. He's out on the close play. They got Trammell on the fourth out. And the Tigers fail to score. No runs, two hits, no errors. One man left. We go to the last half of the seventh. Twins two, Tigers one. Say, fans, are you enjoying the Labatt's Baseball Trivia Quiz? We sure enjoy bringing it to you. And here's another question. Do you know who holds the American League record for the fewest hits in a season while leading the league in hits? Try to remember, and while you do, here's something else to remember. Remember Labatt's Clearwater 
Yes, fans, Labatt's is beer at its finest, a very special brew imported fresh from Canada. When it's time for beer, remember Labatt's, the clear water, blue sky taste of Canada beer, brewed in Canada since 1828. Okay, now, in 1968, with only 178 hits, Bert Campanaris of the Oakland A's led the American League in hits. Did you remember that? Then you just got a hit of your own in the Labatt's Baseball Trivia Quiz. Brought to you by Labatt Importers, Amherst, New York. Well, the old seventh inning stretch in Bloomington, and the Twins lead the Tigers two to one. Wilcox on the mound, getting ready to face Minnesota in the seventh inning. Sometimes I lose phone numbers, and I've lost one of Ollie McLaughlin. If Ollie will call my home and give it uh, to my family, I would appreciate it. Great Tiger fan, Ollie McLaughlin, and we've lost his phone number. Well, here come the Twins. It'll be Wilfong to lead off, followed by Powell and Smalley, the top of the batting order. Wilcox and uh, Zahn have uh, gone all the way in this baseball battle in Minnesota. Twins with a run in the second, a run in the third. The Tigers got a one in the fourth. And it is a bot down toward third. Rolling foul picked up now by Rodriguez. Strike one, the count. Kansas City and Chicago scheduled at uh, Chicago, but we do not have any report on that game. We don't know what happened. There's uh, no rain delay on our ticker. It's simply uh, nothing has come in yet, but it is uh, scheduled as a day game as far as we can tell. Did we ever get the starting pitchers? They sent the starting pitchers through. Gale for Kansas City. Craveck for the White Sox, but no other report. They may have had a rain delay that has not been on the ticker. Here's a strike called a fastball over. Two strikes. Home runs in the Major League so far. Evans uh, of Boston, Thomas of Milwaukee, and Hernandez of the St. Louis Cardinals have hit home runs on this date. And Weinig has hit one here in this team. There's a ground ball foul down past uh, Tony Oliva, strike two. Seattle and Boston. Colvin started for Seattle. Uh, Montague were leaving the sixth. And Ripley on the mound for Boston. They're tied 3-3 in the eighth inning. Milwaukee, Cleveland tied 3-3 there in the eighth inning. There's another foul to reach the seats back a third. In that Milwaukee, uh, Cleveland game, Replico pitching for Milwaukee. Hood started for Cleveland. Spillner has relieved him with Milwaukee batting in the eighth. And in the St. Louis-Cincinnati game, it is 3-2 St. Louis in the seventh. Vukovic against Bonham, relieved by Hume in the second. There's a ball low. One and two now, the count on Wilfong. New York at San Francisco getting started. Uh, Zachary for New York. Nepper for the Giants. He takes a strike on the outside corner, and he is out of there. He stood there like the house by the side of the road, and watch that one go by. That is the sixth strikeout for Wilcox. And here's Hoskin Powell, the leadoff man with a walk, a line drive to third, and the bounce out to second base. Native of Alabama, Hoskin Powell. He's hit well in the minor leagues wherever he's played. Takes a slow curve outside. Right-hander Wilcox delivers. Here's a chop foul in the dirt behind the plate. One and one the count on him. Two runs, five hits for the Twins. One run, seven hits for the Tigers. There's been no errors in this game. Powell out of the batter's box, now back in to wait on a 1-1 delivery. Here it comes. He swings, and there's a little looper to right field. Stanley digging, won't get it in time. Drops in front of him, and it is a single. Oh, Powell gets his first hit. That will be the sixth hit for the Twins. And Roy Smalley will be the batter.
Well, they saved up on us on that Chicago game. They finally sent through some innings, and the White Sox have a six to nothing lead over the KC Royals at the end of five. Mingori relieved in the second for Kansas City. It's a ball outside, ball one. Two to one, the Twins in the lead. They've got a man out and the man out now. The old tickers used to give you every half inning. The new system now, they'll save up. Make it a little better story, I guess. Well, they saved up uh, five innings on us in uh, Chicago today. There's a throw to first, and he's back in time. Powell edging off again, set by Wilcox. Throw to first, he's back again. That was a little bit closer. the plate. Ball on the count on Roy. Switch batter takes the ball in close. 2-0 oh the count on him now. He's single in a run in the third inning. He also has had a double. First time up he fouled the first. Two for three for Smalley. is off, doesn't go, and the Wilcox curve is low, 3-0 and oh now on Smalley. Now Carew is the next scheduled batter. Jim Crawford running down from the Tiger dugout toward the bullpen. Here's a strike call. I'm not using those bullpens uh, out there in the right field. Well, whether it's because they've changed for this year or whether uh, they've had so much rain they can't use them out there. Anyway, they're using both ends down along the uh, sidelines now. Throw over to first, and he's back in time. Three and one is the count on the batter, Smalley. One man down, seventh inning. Twins lead the Tigers two to one. We'll keep an eye on Powell to see whether he goes or not on this pitch. He does. It's a foul ball out of play. Mark likes to use that and run as much as he can. Marty Herzog used it a lot over in Kansas City in that two-game set against the uh, Tigers, and it was working for him. Smalley about ready to get back in there now. 3-2 the count on him. We'll keep an eye on the Powell again. Will he go? Yep, there he goes. The pitch is outside. It's ball four. He can trot from now on, and there are two men on for the Twins. And that sets the table for Rod Carew. Two on and one out. Carew is hit into a double play, and then the next two times, going to walk. Five walks off Wilcox. He's walked five and struck out six. Crawford continuing to throw on the Tiger bullpen. They've got the infield in double play depth on Carew. Right-hander Wilcox sets and pitches. Carew swings the bounding ball to second, maybe two. Whitaker to travel one. Relay to Thompson. Double play and the inning's over. No run. One hit in the walk. No errors. One man left. The end of seven. Twins two, Tigers one. I know a friend when I see one. And I know a good thing when I get it. I know where to go when I need a helping hand. That's why I've got a friend who's a marathon man. That's why when you're taking care of something important like your car, it's good to do business with somebody you know by his first name. Somebody who takes you and your car personally and treats
treats it like it was his own. Somebody you ought to know. You're a marathon man. Go get together with a got together to do it better, and we do. Did you know that nearly 2,000 Americans will end up in a hospital bed this year after a wild game of croquet? I'm Dale Conquest, WJR Sports. Twins hold the lead. The Tigers trying to pull out of their losing spin. They've lost five in a row. The Twins have won four straight. And the two starters are still in there. Zahn for Minnesota. And Wilcox for the Tigers. Here's Ron LaFleur. He's walked single and bounced to third. Milwaukee, Cleveland, 3-3 in the eighth inning. Boston, Seattle, 3-3 in the eighth inning. Chicago leads Kansas City in the sixth inning, 6 nothing. One National League scores St. Louis 3, Cincinnati 2 in the seventh. Low curve is over, but it's high. Ball one on LaFleur. LaFleur, Kemp and Staub to try to get it going for the Bengals here. Here's the wind up and the pitch. It's in too close on the inside corner for a strike. Terry tempting me with the candid goodies here. Here's the pitch. He takes the ball outside. Uh, two and one. Tigers need some instant runs. They trail two to one in the eighth inning. Now Zahn checking his sign. Delivers. There's a top foul over past third base. Two to the count on him. You mean to tell me you can't eat taffy while you're on the air? <laughs> All that popcorn you can handle? Things are bad enough as they are. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Tap of the third. A glove by Cubbage. Throw to first. He got him by three steps. Here's Kemp at the plate. He has a double in three turns against the left hander. would be the worst thing you could eat while you broadcast? Peanut butter sandwich and a milk sundae. <laughs> a, a milkshake. A milkshake, yeah. Here's the ball outside, ball one. Twins two, Tigers one, eighth inning. Here's a fly ball to short center backing up his smallie. He's under it now. He has it for the out. Two down, and uh, John has been in control all the way. Here's Rusty Staub. Rusty 0 for 3 in this one. He's fouled to the catcher, bounced to short, and got to the second. Tigers, for a good part of the year, were leading the league in hitting, but their hitting has uh, fallen off drastically in the last couple of weeks. Especially, uh, they're hitting in the clutch. Rusty not quite ready to step in there. Later report from Cleveland there in the ninth inning tied 3-3 with Milwaukee. There's a flat arm curve for strike. Don ready, kicks and kneels, and it's a pop foul back of the plate to reach the seat. A man with a Philadelphia batting helmet thought he might have another chance to redeem himself, but he didn't. Here's the wind-up and the pitch on the way. There's a bounding ball to first base. Garou has it, makes the play unassisted, and the Tigers go quietly in the eighth inning. One, two, three. We go to the last half of the eighth. The Twins, two, Detroit, one. They came from across the sea, from Japan, Germany, England, Italy, bright and eager to show what they could do.
They were foreigners in a foreign land. But one thing that was true in the old country was also true in the new. You can't buy a better bug for any kind of car than Champion. You can't buy a better bug no matter where you are than Champion. Champion, number one in the world. Number one in your car. Imports from every country find America is the land of opportunity. The opportunity to use Champions, the world's best-selling spark plug. The plug that wins more big races. For imports, you can't buy a better plug than Champion. You can't buy a better plug than Champion. You can't buy a better plug than Champion. got a later report now from Fenway Park. Seattle has uh, regained the lead against the Boston Red Sox, 4-3, and they're in the ninth inning of that one. Here in Minnesota, the Twins got a run in the second on the home run by Wanniga. Added another one in the third on a single by Norwood, a sacrifice by Wilfong, and a single by Smalley. They land 2-0 at that point. Well, then the Tigers picked up a run in the fourth inning. Thompson led off with a double, and Rodriguez fought him with a double to get that run home, and there's been no scoring since then. The two starters still in there. Wilcox for the Tigers, Don for Minnesota. We're in the last half of the eighth inning at Bloomington. Two runs, six hits, no errors for Minnesota. One run, seven hits, and no errors for the Tigers. Here's Dan Ford, who has gone 0 for 3. He's hit safely now in 10 straight games. In this one, he's bounced to short, fly to right, and got it back to the pitcher. Right-hander against the right-hander. And Ford takes a curve over for a strike. Big motion by Wilcox, and he's got a little change up on his curve. Outfield deep and straight away on Ford. He'll be followed by Weiniger, then it'll be Cubbage. Now Wilcox tired of waiting on Ford. Ford is ready now. Let's see if he'll uh, stay in there. Strike one pitch coming up to him. And he takes a breaking ball low and away, one and one. Don't forget the Paul Carey scoreboard show when the game's over. Stay tuned for all the scores. Here's a ball outside at 2-1 and one the count. Ford steps away again. Back in the batter's box to wait on the 2-1 delivery. Moved him uh, back a little bit with a high tight one, three and one the count on Ford. Twins have left seven runners on. Tigers have left a total of five on. Tigers have picked up a couple of double plays. Carew's not, uh, batted into two double plays today. And the Tigers have had a couple of guys nipped on the bases too. There's a foul ball out of play. A gentleman with a tiger batting helmet on caught that one. It's amazing to me when you go to these ballparks, including Tiger Stadium, that you see so many batting helmets on people that don't represent the home team. Seen Cincinnati and Atlanta and Philadelphia here today. There's a bounding ball to left, the base hit. Ford keeps his hitting streak alive. That's his 11th straight. Dying for two. Here's the throw. He is in the safety. took advantage of it and uh, raced on into second base safely. Whitaker took a hard slide from Ford, but uh, Lou is up on his feet now, hobbling somewhat, but he's uh, standing on the infield grass. Now he's uh, still having a little trouble walking. Bill Beam's come up to the dugout step, but he's not going out on the field. He and Hal uh, apparently is satisfied that Whitaker's okay and can continue. It is a double for Ford. Extra hustle got him in there at second base. He just went into another gear and put on the speed. The hits are even, seven apiece. That's an important extra base for Minnesota. They're in a spot now where they a little more easily get that uh, run in. They've got a two-to-one lead. Man on second and nobody down. Nine thousand eight hundred and seven. Nine thousand eight hundred and seven. 
Knight, 9,807 is the paid attendant. 5,724. Paid attendant, 9,807. That's our press box intercom. You probably hear in the background. Here's the pitch now. It's a ball outside. 2-0 the count. 15,531 is the total. Of the paid attendance, 9,807. Here's he set the pitch. He swings as a long belt to right. It's hooking far out in the seat. Down into the right field corner off the bat of Butch Wanigan. Twins have had a hit in every inning except two, and they've had runners in those two innings on walk. Well, they've had a man on base in every inning. The Tigers uh, went out one, two, three in the second inning, in the fifth, and in the eighth. Wilcox pitches, Weiniger hits a high foul out of play on the left field side. Here comes Kemp over, but he won't get it. It's in among the customers. Should be getting some finals soon from Cleveland and Boston there in the ninth inning. Milwaukee, Cleveland tied 3-3. Seattle leads the Red Sox 4-3 in the ninth. Ladies, we have some Chicago there in the sixth inning with the White Sox leading KC 6-0. The other game's a night game. And that uh, National League Day game is uh, still stuck at the uh, seventh inning, St. Louis 3, Cincinnati 2. Weiniger waiting on a 2-2 delivery from Wilcox. Here it comes. He swings on the line foul. It's down past Tony Oliva. 2-2 the count on him. Little item in the uh, current sporting news about Shy Park, the old uh, ballpark in Philadelphia. They're going to make a shopping center out of it. Well, they had some great stars play in that park for both the leagues over the years. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a foul fly to deep right. He waited for that curve and timed it pretty well, but he pulled it too much. Two-two on Butchwanaga. Two to one, Twins lead the Tigers. Eighth inning, man on second for Minnesota, nobody out. Set the pitch. He looks for the ball low. Full count on him. Cubbage is waiting on deck. This is the middle part of the batting order for the Twins. Wilcox sets, pitches, fly ball to the field deep. LaFleur going back, he's there. Reaches up, makes the catch. Here's the tag by Ford. He will make it to third. And the throw comes in a little bit late. He's safe at third. Man on third, one man out, and the coverage will be the batter. At one time in the baseball rules, that would have been no time at bat. Or Weiniger would have been a sacrifice, but not anymore. will have to play their infield in close now. They're almost to the end of grass on the left-hand batting cubbage. Keep an eye on Ford at third base. Here's the set by Wilcox, and Cubbage takes a breaking pitch in for a strike call. Ford's a good runner. Now, edging down the line at third, keeping an eye on Wilcox, who's working off the set position at the mound. Two to one, Twins lead the Tigers, eighth inning. Here comes four down the line a little farther, and then uh, jogs on back to a third. Wilcox uh, still looking over that way. Now gets his sign. Coverage weight, strike one pitch is low. Good stop by May. That ball hit in front of the plate. Now Cabbage steps out. Twins have led this game all the way. They're ahead now two to one of the eighth. Cabbage waits. Here it comes. He swings to the bounding ball to first base. Two for a base hit. Thompson launched to his left side but couldn't come up with it and the run scores on the single to right. Three to one. Twins lead the Tigers. 
the drawn in infield. Gives up a run on the hit to Covey. Ford crossing the plate. And the batter now will be Glenn Adams, the designated batter who struck out twice and bounced the second. Covey at first, one man down, and the pitch is a ball to the designated batter, Adams, ball one. That was the eighth hit for the Twins. Scoring their third run. Ball outside. The Tigers' number one problem has been hitting ever since uh, they made that trip east to play Baltimore and Boston and dropped seven out of eight games. Not the number of hits so much, but the... Uh, Time factor in those hits, getting him in the clutch. Bounding ball to the right of Samuel. He goes over, drives it, throws to Whitaker. One relay to Thompson. It is a double play, the third one for the Tigers. A good move there by Samuel over to Whitaker to Thompson. And that retires the Twins in the eighth inning, but they get a run. One run on the two hits. There were no errors and nobody left. At the end of eight, Minnesota three, Detroit one. When can you afford to throw money away? Not when I shop. Not when I drive. Not when I go to the bank. A small change can add up to big dollars. That's why there's a big difference between City National Bank and those other banks that charge you for writing checks. Nobody, but nobody has got. For City National Bank has got. Only City National Bank saves you money with combo checking. Keep a minimum $200 in checking or savings. You write all your checks without charge. All your checks without charge. Combo checking. No other bank in Michigan has it. No statement fees. No charge per check. At City National Bank, I feel terrific because I'm not throwing money away. Don't throw your money away. Open a City National Bank charge-free checking account now. Who's got it? Nobody. A National Bank. Also available at National Bank of Rochester and First Citizens Bank in Troy. This is Radio 76, where news comes first every hour. And I'm Dave White, inviting you to join us, just so you'll know, here on WJR Detroit. Before the Tigers bat in their ninth inning, let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Hi, this is Bob Hines inviting you to join me weekends right here on America's great radio station for the great weekend. Here on Radio 76, WJR Detroit. Minnesota Twins lead the Detroit Tigers 3-1 to in the ninth inning in Minnesota. Here's Jason Thompson to lead off for the Tigers. He's had a single, a double, and a fly to deep right. Two for three for Jason. They've got Mike Marshall throwing now in the Minnesota bullpen. And Don uh, trying to give the Tigers their sixth straight defeat. Goes to work, and it is a curve outside. Don, get him out and uh, win this ball game. It'll be five straight wins for the Twins. Jason waiting. Here it comes. He hits a chopper on one big hop to second. Wilfong has it over to Carew. One away. Well, the last five Tigers have gone down in a row. And here comes Aurelio Rodriguez. We've got a final. Those Boston Red Sox did it again. They came up with two in the ninth inning and beat Seattle five to four. Almost unbeatable at Fenway Park. Stanley the winner, he's 5-1. Montague took the loss, he's 0-3. Leon Roberts hit another home run for Seattle. It came in the eighth inning with nobody on his eighth. Evans had one for Boston. There's a ball in too close on Rodriguez. 32,551 saw that game at Boston. 3-1 to one here in Minnesota. The Twins have the three. The Tigers have the one. Rodriguez drove in the only run with a double in the fourth inning. He takes the ball in the dirt. 2-0 on Aurelio. Later report from Cincinnati. The Cardinals now have a 5-3 to three lead over the Reds there in the eighth inning there. 
Don trying for the final two outs of the game. Pitches. It is a ball high and wide at 3 and 0 oh on Rodriguez. Dark skies again in Minnesota. Now Zahn checks his time with Weiniger. Kicks and deals. Here's a ball. He walks him. That is the second walk of Zahn. He had not walked anybody after he gave a pass to the leadoff man, LaFleur, starting the game. So Stanley comes to bat now with a man on and a man out of the ninth inning. Mickey's bounced to third, bounced to second, and single to left. Latest we had from Cleveland, Milwaukee, and the Indians were in a 3 3 tie in the ninth inning. And Chicago leading Kansas City in the sixth, six to nothing. Well, here's Stanley. They play him straight away. It's a strike call. Single game here tomorrow. And the Tigers uh, head on to Toronto for two to close out this trip. They'll come back and play the Yankees next Thursday at Tiger Stadium. Over but low, one and one the count on Mickey. That's a four-game series. The Yankees into Tiger Stadium Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon. Now it's down to the set position, the left-hander ready. Holds it, kicks and pitches. There's a cut on the foul back of the plate. One and two on Stanley. Rodriguez at first, one out, ninth inning. Tigers failed by two, three to one. Tigers lost two in Kansas City. They lost the first game in this series. Their losing streak has now been extended to five in a row. And right now trying to avert the six straight loss. Here's the one-two pitch to Becky Stanley. Swing a tap foul over toward the Tiger dugout. Still a one-two count on Mickey. He's not quite ready to get back in there against Zahn. Time call at the plate by umpire Bill Haller. Uh, Stanley uh, steps in and the left hand is on. Looks going to get his sign from Weiniger. Here's the set by Jeff and the pitch. It's high, fastball, 2-2. Two -two. Carew wide of the bag at first, and even with it, he's not playing over there bothering about Rodriguez too much. The tag is trailing by a couple. Here's the set in the pitch. He swings and pops it up over near third base. Cabbage calling for it. He has it between home and third, and there are two away. The batter now will be Milt May. May has uh, popped the shortstop and struck out twice. Three to one. The Twins lead. It looks like we're going to get some rain any minute here. Man on first, two down. Tigers have one out left. Tom, the left hander, kicks and deals. And Milt May takes a curveball that bends over for a strike. Rodriguez uh, off the bag at first. May swings as they fly ball to center. Should end the game. Ford makes the catch. It's over. And the Tigers have dropped their sixth in a row. The Twins have won the first two games of this series. In the ninth inning, the Tigers, no runs, no hits, no errors, one man left, and the final score, Minnesota 3, Detroit 1. Say, folks, here's a tip on something new in Detroit. It's a doubleheader, too, a major league twin bill. Park wants and see both the Art Institute and the New Science Center. They're right across the street from each other in the Cultural Center. The Museum Science Center doubleheader is 6 
days weekly, every day but Monday. Take the kids down for a couple of hours. Push all the buttons at the Science Center. See the overhead movie, Cosmos. Then look at the Art Institute pictures and snack in the museum cafe. As I say, park just once for both. Not a bad game plan, right? Slip behind the wheel of the WJR Funmobile as Mark Avery shows you the way to go home in the afternoon music hall. It's a carload of unique entertainment that helps you absorb the shocks of that winding and long road. Complete with your favorite music, important pit stops for vital traffic information, special guests and convivial companionship. Mark Avery, afternoons 3 to 6, here on WJR Radio 76. The Tigers have dropped six in a row now, all to, uh, well, two in a row to Milwaukee, two to Kansas City, now two in a row to Minnesota, with only one more to go here at Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, a finale of this series coming up tomorrow. The Minnesota Twins getting an excellent pitching performance from the left-hander Jeff Zahn today, who uh, scattered seven Tiger hits in beating the Tigers three to one. For Zahn, it was his fifth complete game of the year. He has, uh, he leaves that department for the Minnesota Ball Club. And he ups his record to seven wins against four defeats. Milt Wilcox, who likewise went all the way for the Tigers, suffered his fifth defeat. His third in a row, he has won four. The totals for Minnesota, three runs, eight hits, and no errors. They left seven on base. The Tigers had one run, seven hits, and no errors, and left six on base. The game took two hours and 15 minutes before a turnout of 9,807 paid here today. I'll be back with the scoring of the ball game after these messages. Okay, fans, here comes a high hard win in Labatt's baseball trivia quiz. All settled in? Name the only outfielder who ever made 500 or more putouts in four major league seasons. That's a hard one to remember, but here's something a little easier. Remember Labatt. Yes, fans, Labatt's is fine imported beer, the best that Canada brews. It's a special brew for your special times, shipped fresh to you with pride. Labatt's, the clear water, blue sky taste of Canada beer, brewed in Canada since 1828. Okay, for nine years, Richie Ashburn of the Phillies had 400 or more putouts. In four of those years, he had 500 or more putouts. By comparison, only two American League outfielders ever had even one 500 putout season. Our pleasure is always in the Labatt's Baseball Trivia Quiz. Brought to you by Labatt Importers, Amherst, New York. Did you know that by the time you are 75, you will have put one foot down after the other for a total of 75,000 miles? That's a sports stat. I'm Jim Forrest, WJR Sports. Well, the Twins led all the way in this ball game after Butch Weiniger hit a one-out home run down the right field line in the second inning. It was Butch's third of the year and uh, the seventh given up by Milt Wilcox this season. In the third inning, the Twins added a run. Willie Norwood led off with an infield hit, was sacrificed to second by Rob Wilfong, and with two outs, scored on a bleeder single by Roy Smalley up the middle. The Tigers got their only run of the ball game in the fourth inning on back-to-back -back leadoff doubles by Jason Thompson and Oradio Rodriguez. And the Twins added an insurance run in the eighth when Dan Ford led off with a double to left field. And with one out, he scored on a single to right by Mike Cubbage, a single through the drawn-in infield. So it was uh, really a pitcher's ball game here today, but Jeff Zahn was the superior pitcher. The Tigers just simply couldn't do much with him. The Tigers left six on base. The Twins left seven. Zahn struck out two, walked two in scattering the seven hits, while Wilcox struck out six and walked five and deserved a little better support. Now they wind up with the series tomorrow as the Tigers will try to end what is now a six-game losing streak. We'll find Jim Slayton going for Detroit against Dave Gold, a 20-game winner of last year with the Twins. Our broadcast coverage to begin the...